Yeah. Your poems to say, give it up for your host, Stephen Morgan. Yeah. A poem got by Stephen Morgan. We have a very funny relationship, he and I. Guys, we've got a nice international crowd, right? Yeah, yeah very good. Uh, where's, where are my Americans at? <laughs> uh, show that American pride. Uh, British? Woo! All right. The Allied, the Axis powers. <laughs> you three are now the targets of tonight. <laughs> Water under a bridge. <laughs> um, guys, it's, it's great to be here in Nijmegen. It's my first time ever in Nijmegen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Pop of a cherry. Yeah, with 300 people in a tiny basement. <laughs> Guys, I, I, growing up, I wasn't really, you know, one of the cool kids. I mean, I, you know, you look at me now, you think, what? <laughs> and you're right. I mean, I'm cool as fuck. But, you know, it took a lot of work, you know? Listening to a lot of hip-hop, a lot of Eminem say, I don't give a fuck. And, you know, it's starting to make sense. Um, but growing up, I, I, I loved, you know, playing with dolls. I loved playing with toy animals. I don't know why that was so funny, playing with dolls. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I, I want to tell you guys about the best birthday gift I ever got, uh, which was a toy horse for my sixth birthday. And my mom got me a toy horse, not just any toy horse, it was a Barbie horse, right? And I'm gonna tell you about this horse in detail. <laughs> so this was a white toy horse, right? And it had a pink saddle on its back. It had pink skirts around its hooves. It had a, a, mane, a mane that flowed in the wind and a tail that could, you know, that float. It wasn't that plasticky bullshit that was like attached to the body. This wasn't a, a discount horse. This was a premium fucking horse, right? <laughs> This is a stud. And uh, <laughs> all four of this horse's legs moved separately. And they had joints, so you could make this horse trot. Or you could make this horse gallop. You could make this horse fucking fly. <laughs> Only if you had the imagination for it, like I did. And one day, it was bring your toy to school day. And the night before, I'm pacing around in my room, and I'm thinking, what am I going to take? What am I going to take? This is a huge opportunity for you to share something with your peers, right? You have an opportunity to show them who you are. You know, if there's uh, any group of people that enjoy and appreciate a, a, a genuine personal gesture, it's six and seven year olds. <laughs> I see you nodding, and I'm like, yes, that is absolutely true. <laughs> uh, the night before, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm racking my brain, like I'm thinking, like, I don't want to mess this up. And then, as I'm pacing, it hits me. And I think, Roger, it's so simple. The answer's been in front of you all along. Why not bring this baller-ass horse with you to school? Everyone will love you for it. And if you're trying to be popular, and you are trying to be popular, this is the move. Right, so the next day, I get up early, I get a good breakfast, I say, so long, mother! And I walk out of the house, horsey under my arm. I'm walking to school with a confident gait of Kanye West. Before of all the, you know, make America <laughs> great again bullshit. And I'm walking to school and I'm feeling good. Chest is puffed up and I get to school, I push open the door, I step inside. And as soon as I do this, this older kid, all the way across the hall, who claps me and says, Hey, look, everybody, Roger's got a horsey. He's so gay. <laughs> and I just stood there, chest deflated, horsey under my arm, <laughs> with a single tear rolling down my gorgeous cheek. And I thought, why did he just say that? I thought this was cool. <laughs> and then it hit me. And, 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 and so much later, it, it, it took me so long to figure out that on this fateful day, bring your toy to school day, Roger got his first hater. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say haters go hate to shine over that horsey young Roger. 
Because that's the advice I would give my six-year-old self. <laughs> Only we could go back. Uh, guys, let's talk about this in, in all honesty. Wet dreams. <laughs> yeah. Who still has them as an adult? <laughs> you raise, raise your hands. You can raise your hands. So we're just going to pretend I'm the only one. <laughs> so, all right, man. Very cool. I happen to think they're the best. I think they're the best ever. Why? I'll explain. Because they're practical as fuck. You mean to tell me I get a good night's sleep and have sex with Kim Kardashian without Kanye West interfering? Sign me up. I'll take that. Yeah. Hey, fam, that's my wife, man. None of that. None of that. It's just me and Kim. Yeah. Yeah, me and Kim. <laughs> A little clean up on aisle six in the morning, if you know what I'm saying, but that's all right. <laughs> Two sides to every coin, those positives, negatives. Positives, sex with whomever. Negative, you don't get to choose. <laughs> right? This is Russian roulette. <laughs> the sex version. So it could be Kim Kardashian, could also be Kanye West. <laughs> could also be Grandma. <laughs> And you can't just snap out of a dream. So now you, I don't know why I'm looking at you, you're moving one row back. You are stuck having sex with grandma, and you can't snap out of it. You're like, I'm having sex with grandma. I'm just, oh, it feels good. Oh, my God. Oh. So fuck, though. Good night in my book. Good night. All right, guys. Um, I, uh, in, in addition to being a, a comedian, I'm also an actor, and I'm actually starting to do, thank you, I'm actually starting to do acting work now uh, for money, and uh, after years of just telling people, I'm an actor, you know, <laughs> which is really great, and, and for the, the past few years, I've been really looking for projects where I have to, you know, alter my appearance in some way, and, you know, just something drastic to step out of my creative comfort zone, I guess, you know, like, you know, grow out my hair, or gain a bunch of weight, uh, you know, get a boob job, whatever. <laughs> and uh, for the longest time, nothing. You know, I didn't get anything. People were like, no, you find the way you are. Um, and then recently, I got one. I did a production at the National Opera. They told me, we need you to shave your beard. You're going to be a German soldier, not people. <laughs> and I was like, fuck yes. This is happening. This is moving forward. This is great. Another step towards my goals. This is wonderful. And then I thought back to the last time I shaved my beard, which was three years ago. Uh, uh, you, sir, with a, with a very handsome beard. Do you enjoy shaving off your beard? No. It, when is the last time you actually had no beard at all? Like when you were just clean? Two years. Two years, yeah, right. Any, anyone? Oh, you, sir. You, the, you, do, you, do you enjoy shaving your beard? Sometimes. Traitor. <laughs> You shave off your beard, you're like a different person. Like, well, might as well move to another fucking country. Start a new life in Guatemala as a coffee farmer. <laughs> Last time I shaved my beard was three years ago, like I said. It was for my wife's birthday, and uh, it, was, it was a lot longer uh, back then. So, you know, let's, let's clean it up. Let's make it nice for her. And uh, so I started with the trim. I was like, you know, don't need to do too much. But then I did that thing where you, you take off too much off of one side. And, oh, fuck. <laughs> it was like this you know, square cut out of my beard, so I was like, I just gotta fix the other side, and it took too much off there, and then it went back and forth, and back and forth, and I'm down to a stubble before I know it. I don't have enough beard to justify a stubble. I'm not Jason Statham. I don't have a beard that goes all the way up to my eyeball. So I was like, you know what? A clean line, 90s R&B. You know, the dudes from Black Street. You know, those dudes were cool. Let's do that. I did it, and it looked 90s R&B, but in the worst, possible way. This is like snow, not black street. This is snow. You know the guy from Informer? Informer. That dude? Yeah. Yeah. I got some snow fans in the audience. Oh, yeah. uh, I like, fuck, okay, this has got to come off. Before I take it all off, I have one more card to play. Just the mustache. There's two people in this world, two men, who should never have just a fucking mustache. Me and Michael Sarah. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I was shocked 
how much I looked like any police sketch of a pedophile ever. <laughs> it was awful. Any, any stereotypical portrayal of a pedophile in a movie ever, just without those you know, 80s glasses. Guys, thank you so much. My name is Roger Bach. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.